Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One. Today we are installing a My Energy Zappy, and it's the new variant. So it's the one with the built-in Wi-Fi. For those of you who watched our last video where we installed a My Energy Zappy alongside a solar system, you will have seen we used a hub and a Harvey and brought that all together to make it smart enough to be connected to the app so the consumer can monitor exactly what they're consuming, exactly what their installation's doing. With this product, you don't necessarily need the hub. As long as there is good Wi-Fi signal around the Zappi itself, it can become the brains of an installation, make that connection to the internet of things, um, so you can remove the requirement of a hub. Point of note, you must ensure that there is good Wi-Fi signal around the Zappi itself, which we have on this installation. So this is a basic car charger install. There is gonna be some solar panels coming onto this install in the future, which is why we've gone for the Zappi in this case. Preparing for that, because as any of you who watch my channel will know, it's my firm opinion that that is the best, you know, setup to go for if you are having a solar system put in your house. But if we look at the consumer unit up here, you can see it's in reasonable condition and we have spare capacity for the charge point to be installed. We've already brought the EV Ultra cable in and I'll show you the other side of this. The charge point is literally the other side of this wall, but you can see we've brought it through, blended it into the back of the consumer unit. We've got our twisted pair here ready for the CT clamp that we can put on the main tail. Point of note, this cable is rated for the maximum voltage, so it's quite fine going within a consumer unit. Now, because the Zappi has RCD protection built in, it has pen fault detection built in, you don't need to put any upfront RCD protection onto the charge point itself. However, if you're installing your cable in a way that it warrants it, you still have to comply with the intent of the wiring regulations. And because this is an equivalent of NYY cable, it's not armored, we wanted to put an RCD on there because it passes through the cavity, just a bit of belts and braces, and in doing so, we've gone for this double pole RCD on the end. So essentially we're feeding um, with overcurrent protection from this MCB, and then our final circuit goes out from this RCD to the charge point. It could be argued it isn't necessary because the main tails on this board pass through the cavity anyway. They have no RCD protection. However, it felt like the right thing to do, so we've popped them in there. If ever the charge point's changed in the future where it doesn't include RCD protection, you know it's there as well. So it doesn't hurt. You just have the issue now where there's no real selectivity between the RCD that's in the Zappi and the one that's in this board. But on such a small install, I don't think it's that big a deal. And to have that extra protection on essentially an NYY cable that's passing through the cavity made sense to me. I'll show you it on the outside so you can have a look exactly what I mean with that. Another point of note on this one, it is just rock wool, rock wool in the cavity, so we didn't really need to provide any extra protection in terms of degradation from polystyrene that could have come into contact with any outer insulation. But it is also worth considering dropping some conduit through between A and B, so you're forming a channel for the cable to live nicely in. People get upset about that running cables in cavities. But for those of us who work as electricians, we know it's a very common thing that we're faced with, and it's not always straightforward to solve. In this case, we've just run in a downward direction point at the outside, so any moisture that could collect on the cable will run to the external um, skin, because that's another thing. You can bridge the cavity and cause issues with damp. So it is a bit of a minefield, one to keep your eyes on. As long as you seal the holes, both ends, nice and tight to make them weatherproof as possible, and you've considered what is in the cavity, I think you'll be fine. But the main focus on this video is the new Zappi Wi-Fi, so we'll go and have a look at that outside, we'll see how it goes on the wall, look at some of the differences between what used to be inside a Zappi and what is now inside one, and then we'll show you how it all gets programmed up and set up onto the network to become the brains of your eco-friendly home installation. Okay, so you can see we've popped out of the brickwork there. Luckily, you come out on a join, we've been able to seal nice and tightly. We've gone for the Linean super clips, dropping all the way down, and then we're looping into the bottom of the Zappi. And we've got a nice gland on there, so we're well sealed in. And then, um, yeah, we're all good to go in here. You can see these are push fit terminals, so I like that. That's a nice way of ensuring your connections are sound and solid and the manufacturer is now taking ownership of that so that's good and the same for the cts so you've got little push fit terminals there matthew's gone for his little signature move on this one where he wraps the spare strands around the ethernet cable that's inside here um we did take them over for a while but he thinks that's better so that's what he does um you can see we have got the yeah, it's all ready to go. We've got the ribbon ready to put in. So yeah, should be a nice one when we get that on the wall. Just a point of note with the destructions, they are now coming with this little leaflet, if I can grab hold of it. 
and it basically talks you through setting up the Wi-Fi. The rest of the manual is same as it was on the older version. Maybe a few little tweaks in there, but generally it looks the same. But this is an extra little leaflet they've popped in there, which talks about connecting it to the internet and it replacing the hub. Basically says if you're ordering a Zappi and it has the H in there, that means that it has the built-in Ethernet port and Wi-Fi. So if you plug an Ethernet in, have a look for that Ethernet port. It must be in here somewhere, um, he says. It's on here. So this must be the Datacom's chip on the front cover. Um, if you've got an Ethernet plugged into that, it will default to the Ethernet. So make sure if you're wanting to use the Wi-Fi, you've not plugged the lead into there. And um, yeah, then it's just a case of following these instructions. So if you've got a router with a WPS button, you can simply press that and it'll go through the process. It does say to allow two minutes. But just to emphasize that point, if you're ordering these things, it needs a H in the model number to have that Wi-Fi connection. Um, if you're not going through the process of using a WPS, but and it does give you a full set of instructions on how to do this so you can navigate to the Wi-Fi config find um, the wireless network it's trying to connect to and then input the password using the My Energy access point so it's saying here you would connect to your My Energy network and then input all of the details and it walks you through it step by step but we're hoping in our case we don't need to do that because we have a WPS button and it sounds a hell of a lot simpler to just use that. So we'll get on with that, we'll get this energised now and I'll show you in a second setting this up. So we've got our CT on the line tail now, we've made our joins, we're just going to overheat shrink these and pop them up out of the way and then we can go and get the power on and have a look at what's going on out at the Zappi. So to get to the Wi-Fi setup menu, if you go down into other settings and then the internet, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi config, and make sure these are all on, but basically go to WDPS activate. Make sure you've turned that on on the router and then press the plus button on here. It should now try and search for the Wi-Fi. You'll see it gives you a countdown clock here. The instructions say to be patient and to allow the full two minutes. Okay, so you can see we're now powered up and we're currently consuming electricity from the grid. Obviously, there's no solar system installed on this as yet. This is acting as the hub. So the connection, if I go back into the other settings, and the internet. Now, if I was to click on Wi-Fi, it would show my MAC address. Um, so I'm just gonna scoop down the display a little bit just to show you that it is connected. So you can see they're connected. And we'll come back out of that menu. If it hadn't have connected through the WPS option, you can still configure this as you normally would connecting a smartphone or a laptop or a tablet to your wireless network as normal. You just input the information as you would in that case and it will connect in that way. Sometimes, as you know, when you're trying to use WPS, it doesn't always work as intended with lots of devices. But in this case, it connected up a tree. Same as ever, you can go into the advanced options, make sure your CTs are all configured correctly. You can see CT1 in the Zaffy is set to grid. If we're going to add other CTs to this system, so when we add solar, we'll be taking the power from the consumer unit that's inside the property. That's why we've taken the data cable into there, because we can clamp inside there as well and transmit that information back to the Zappi ready for it to start recording what the solar is generating and really that's um that's sort of it on the, the Zappi the menu system for those of you who installed these before is very very similar um, you can as ever go into the um let's have a go go into the other settings and put the lock on this is something i've not shown before but you can have it so it auto locks every time you unplug and set the code for that as well so if you're worried about somebody accessing your charge point you can have a code that stops anybody random just wandering up and using it and yeah that's that's kind of it that's the the zappy um h if you like that's what we're going to call it you can see if we check for updates it'll run through that process it checks the wi-fi first make sure it's got an active connection it asks the servers at the my energy end if there is an update for this particular product and you'll see it's swapped to idle and confirmed it's up to date so that's um, a nice feature to have off the front screen. Really simple, but very intuitive menu system that my energy have put on these charge points. Really easy to use, very user friendly. Um, and yeah, you can see at the minute we're in eco mode. I'll leave it in stopped because there's no vehicle going to be charged on this for the meantime. And essentially that leaves it turned off. You can also adjust the, the light output on here if you was wanting to play around with things a little bit. If I go into other settings, display and sound um, you can change the icons so if we go into icons change how they display um, so if we go into here 
can change it to wind or sun depending on what you're using as your generation you can change the backlight brightness the contrast turn the buzzer on and off and you can also make this illuminate to make sure it's working in different color grades which is a nice feature as well but we'll have a little draw of our conclusions and close this video up but yeah that's it on the wall just to give you a little view of that again nice looped feed up there nice linear clips another one ticked off the list okay so it's been a while since i've done a band video i thought why not to end this little zappy install um, the best thing i can really say about the the new version of the zappy the zappy h is you know it's ease of install is very much the same as the prior version when that came out it was ahead of its time and industry leading um, and this hasn't deviated from that it's really straightforward and simple for us to install there's a few subtle changes and ones that improve it even further such as the push fit terminals um, a slight change in the way some of the internals are laid out still lots of rooms room within the enclosure still that very very weatherproof seal on the front um, the menu system is very much the same as before we've just got this unique added extra of having the hub inside the zappy so you don't need that extra component anymore it's something less for us to install something less for a consumer to have to buy and then have lying around next to all the other gubbins that most people have around their routers so it streamlines that takes away that extra component the only thing you need to keep in mind is you need good wi-fi coverage around the zappy so if this was going on a more remote location say out on somebody's external garage or the end of a, a long driveway or whatever on a post you will have to factor that in so either with provision of using an ethernet cable which can also be an option for that connectivity or a wi-fi extender or power over ethernet or something else so it's got that connectivity in its local area if you like failing that you can still use the hub as we always could before it's still always very much compatible and interlinkable you know they've made this so that it's more user friendly and there's more options for us as installers rather than less so it's a big thumbs up from me and um, we'll be installing lots more of these especially as we're seeing solar installs even just future proofing because as we move on through the course of the next three to five years solar is going to be the big thing most terms are probably going to end up with it on top of the houses so having an electric vehicle charge point that can work alongside and with that makes a lot of sense so that's certainly going to be our recommended product to all of our customers and again this isn't paid or sponsored i'm just talking about this with the aim of helping my fellow electricians and also discussing this with the apprentices who follow along to see some of the way we work out on site also some of the career opportunities that they might be able to find for themselves and some of the things they might be able to go and do um, yeah simple as that so i'll drop a link over to the mining web energy website so for those of you who want a bit more of the technical information to see the key differences between this product and the prior one you can do that uh, any other questions drop them in the comments below as always i love the engagement in there so if it's about the product or my install drop them in i'll happily engage in that discussion otherwise thumbs up or thumbs down if you liked or disliked this content and also please don't forget to subscribe to the channel until the next time i will see you again